Welcome to Story Chats at Insby Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. Today we are talking about spring themed books or books that are set in spring or spring. Spring is the, the word of the day. <laughs> spring, we're looking for spring. So um, that's kind of what we're gonna talk about first is what, what criteria did you use to choose your books for this episode. Valerie, you wanna go first? Sure, I would love to go first. Um, I am a farmer and a gardener. And so I look at spring as a time when seeds are planted and, and new life happens in, in a variety of ways, whether it's, you know, baby chicks or the birth of little lambs or calves um, or that it's finally warm enough to get out in the garden and plant some seeds and nurture some tiny plants. First foods are poking out of the ground like rhubarb and asparagus, um, though around here that's not going to be for another few weeks. Mm -hmm. But um, so when I was looking for books with a spring theme, I was looking for those types of tells, I guess, okay. things that went um, this story could not have happened some other time of year because of the of the new life. So does the whole story have to be in spring for you? Is, are, are they all completely spring or do they bleed into other seasons? Um, one of the ones that I've got here definitely led from another season. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to me, I, I just look at it as, is spring kind of a character in this book? Is okay. it is it important? Um, and if it was, then I was like, okay, maybe you, but not you. So, yeah. Love it. Narelle? Um, well, I agree with Valerie, but I'm probably a bit broader in my definition. So if <laughs> spring's in the title, then I'm probably going to notice it because that's an easy way to find books. Yes. Um, and did you find often something it like that? I don't think I did. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, well you'll soon find out. Um, and also, yeah, so, and also probably coming out of winter into spring can be a metaphor as well, I think, in some stories, which is pretty much what you're alluding to. So it can be literally spring with flowers and gardens and baby animals and all the adorable stuff that goes along with it. <laughs> or it can be the, the metaphor of the dark time of winter coming into the new hope and the new life and of spring. Where it's brighter and lighter and um, heading into summer. A little so bit of Richard a metaphor, the Third. Could it happen at a different time of year and have hit your short list? Um, no, I was looking for that time of year. So I've got to remember, I'm not looking for September to November, which oh, no. is Australia spring. I'm looking for March to May. So that was my, my challenge is looking for the wrong half of the year in the, the other hemisphere, but that's a Norel problem. The other spring. <laughs> yes. Northern hemisphere spring. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Um, I, I took it fairly literally. I did not, I did not go into any Richard the Third metaphors about the winter of our discontent being made glorious summer by the son of York, um, you know. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> um, I love Richard the Third. Sorry, <laughs> but um, so I I took it like I needed uh, Valerie. I channeled Farmer Valerie. <laughs> like, are there new crops and baby animals? Then no, it does not count. Um, that's kind of because I didn't know what else to do with it. I. I struggled with this one. I'll just be flat honest. I'm like, I don't, because I did try not to do books that have like the whole gamut of like three of the four seasons in them, you know, right. where they take place over three quarters of a year or even a whole year. Um, and that limits you some because, you know, oftentimes romance novels I feel like are either like over this tiny little space of time or over this really huge space of time right. um and so I, I went for the tiny space but it frame. but it could have been from spring all the way around and ending up in spring again after the winter of discontent there we go <laughs> oh I didn't uh, that would have been smart I see I need to talk to you guys before I start looking for books tell <laughs> me Help me. Well, then, we, then we'd all have the same books. Probably. Probably. 
So um, since we are doing spring, is there anything about books with this theme slash time period setting attached to them um, that you particularly love or that you look for or hope to see? Like what would attract you to a spring book, Valerie? Gardens, Garden. vegetable yeah. gardens yeah. in particular, mm -hmm. um, because I, it's part of my life and part of the lives of many of my fake people. <laughs> I, I yes. mean, the real people that I write about, characters. Um, so to me, yeah, if it's got um, vegetable growing, it's got a, a greenhouse with the little hothouse tomato plants going in it or something like that, then I'm like, ooh, show me more. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think, um, I don't know whether this is, is an issue in your part of the world, but I know when I lived in Melbourne for a couple of years, um, you just didn't feel the sun on your skin in, in winter mm -hmm. because it was just, it wasn't, Melbourne's quite at sea level, so it's not high up. And you'd get to spring and you'd get rid of your seasonal affective depression, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so I think winter can be a really trying time for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, we don't get snowed in Australia, but we still have grey. And so spring, it's finally, you sort of get to spring and think, yes, we're, we're out of winter. We've got warmer weather coming up. We can do more outside. Um, we're less limited by being stuck indoors because it's too cold to do anything outside, et cetera, et cetera. So I yeah. think there's spring always sort of has that hope that comes with it. It's like the, the school holidays are heading your way. And we sort of head to the end of the year as well in Australia with spring. So it's like, we just got to get through the exams in spring and then we get to summer. So I probably sort of see it as the season that gets me to where I want to get to. <laughs> I don't know, it probably sounds strange. Yeah. No, it sounds good. It, it works. It totally works. Cool. Um, for me, like, I don't know that I would specifically seek out a spring theme. Um, it's, it's not one, like if I, if I read it and that was part of it, I could see thinking that it was fantastic, but I, I don't know that there's anything about spring that would make me specifically seek it out more so than like, like if it was Easter specifically, right. which happens in our spring, then I, I could see um, being excited about that. Like Lee Tobin McLean has another Easter book from Love Inspired coming out this year that I'm super excited about. I saw about. that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I get more excited about an Easter themed something, which is spring. <laughs> then, but, but yeah, but it's more specific. It's, it's not just sp spring. Um, so sorry. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, but let's talk books. Let's talk spring books. Let's see what we came up with. Valerie, hit us with your first one. Sure. Um, the first one that came to my mind was a book by Denise Hunter called Blue Ridge Sunrise. And um, this surprisingly takes place in spring. Uh, Zoe Collins returns to Copper Creek, Georgia after five years away and she's there to deal with her inheritance from her grandmother, which is a peach orchard. Um, her life is in Nashville with her daughter Gracie and her boyfriend Kyle, who is the lead singer in a band, and she sings back up in his band. And so that's really where her life is um, now, but now she's inherited this peach orchard that she loved as a child and growing up and what is she going to do right well then there's her high school sweetheart of course mm -hmm. his name is Cruz C-R-U-Z Z however you guys say Cruz. it in Canada it's Z, Z. Um, <laughs> he has managed two out of three we win yeah right um, yeah Cruz has managed Granny's Orchard for the last few years and selling it, which is what her first inclination is, will put him out of a job. So there's just, there's all this kind of stuff going on. And um, the story does not completely take place in spring, but the, the ambiance of a warm spring evening with the peach blossoms, um, is uh, the, the scent of the peach blossoms and stuff really grounds the story in springtime at the beginning and, and it shows that, that that orchard 
which is you know one of those living things that that I talked about a few minutes ago, uh, is a really strong part, a character, if you will, in the story. So to me, that one fit the the bill of being a springtime story. Yeah, I, I think I read that one. Um, I haven't read a ton of Denise Hunter, but that sounds familiar enough. I believe that is one that I read mm -hmm. and remember enjoying. And I agree that. It, it had a spring feel like yeah. because an, an orchard with the blooms and all that um that's that's you don't get much <laughs> springier than a blooming tree like a you know a, a fruit yeah. tree yeah. yeah yeah and there's less work to do in spring than there is in fall or yeah. autumn when you've got to do all the picking right <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, so there's yeah. plenty to do that time of year too but yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Narelle, what's your first one? Well, my first one is One Perfect Spring by Irene Hannon. And so I will confess to being the person that suggested doing this theme. <laughs> and I did have an ulterior motive because I did want to reread this book. So <laughs> there you go. So this is a book I read years ago and wanted to go back and read again. And so the story, it's you probably know from listening to previous episodes that I love the, the trade length, longer contemporary romances that have two romances in it. So this one has a romantic subplot as well as the main romance. And the main character, Claire, is a single mum and she's bought this rundown old house. I think now I'm trying to remember which state they're in, somewhere in the Midwest. It's gone completely out of my head. You know how you need to write these details down or you forget? <laughs> but anyway, so she's bought this old house Um and she's that she's a school teacher and she's quite short of money. She'd been in a difficult marriage. She'd been married to a very selfish man who divorced her and then um, sadly passed away so her daughter doesn't have a father. And she has a lovely neighbour, Maureen, who lives next door, who's almost 60 and has been through this bout with cancer and is in remission. And so she's um, had quite a, a hard time, but she's got a heart of gold, Claire does. And so she's really looked after Maureen. And so she has her adorable 11 year old Haley, who um, gets the bright idea to, after having eavesdropped on her mother's conversation, she's such a naughty little girl, but she's very <laughs> sweet. So she gets away with it. And she was eavesdropping on this conversation and overheard that Maureen had given up a baby 22 years earlier. And she'd been trying to find when she had cancer that's when she really had this epiphany she was a, a an art history college professor so she'd been a career woman all her life worked at a Christian college had had to had gone to Boston to get away and to basically have this child and give it away and it'd been a very traumatic time in her life for a whole range of reasons and when she had cancer she decided she really wanted to reconnect and find out what happened to this little little baby boy that would now be 22 years old. So Haley gets a bright idea to send this letter to this um, charitable um, fundraising organisation that's connected to um, a construction company asking if they would grant her her wish of helping for Maureen to be reunited with her son, which isn't quite what they do. But anyway, so she sends this letter in. And so um, David, who owns the construction company, his um, right-hand man, who's probably will take it over, his name is Keith. And Keith is the hero in this book. And he's, he says to Keith, you need to go through all these letters, find out what we've got, what's worthwhile looking at, what should we look at donating to, et cetera, et cetera. So he finds this letter from Haley and tosses it in the do not look at ever again pile because he just thought this is crazy. But of course, something goes wrong and the letter ends up on the floor and it gets put on the table in the wrong place. And David comes across it and thinks, oh, this is really interesting and different. And he says to Keith, oh, I want you to go find her parents and find out if you can get permission to do this. And so that leads to the first meeting between um, Claire and Keith, which is quite hilariously did not go well so it starts off <laughs> starts off That's almost almost kind of start. yes yeah did not quite go well and um he's a because keeps a workaholic he's like he's just so focused on work his mother's like you need to get married he's like stop nagging me <laughs> and very he's very career focused and so that that so they start off then that sort of enemies to love but they move quite quickly into friends to more but the relationship I actually liked the most in this story was the subplot because David ends up meeting Maureen and he recently he was recently widowed and um, that relationship was the dual relationship in the story and so obviously the search in the story relates to finding her son and um, 
um, Keith also has some baggage from his childhood that he needs to deal with. And I did shed a, th a few tears again when I got towards the end of the book. And I just, it just was so sensitively handled. Like I think adoption is a really tricky topic and is quite heartfelt and emotional for a lot of people. And I really liked the way this story was very satisfying in terms of how it ended. And so it was really a spring you know, story, Nero. Well, it's, it was set, it was a spring theme. So it was the dark, it was the darkness of cancer and winter and coming out of that into to new hope. And so it had that metaphor I was talking about earlier. Okay. It was very much in the book. And I really like Irene Hannon's books. I think this book won an award back in the day as well. I've read quite yeah. a few Irene Hannon's, um, but not that one. I've read quite a few of her coastal set books in uh, yes. um, California and Oregon and, and um, yeah. Oh, this one books before beach books and this I'm one's so set in with romantic suspense is she not yeah. writing romantic suspense? she does quite a lot okay. of romantic yeah. suspense but also quite a lot of ccr okay. right. yeah and i'm thinking this book's set in the suburbs of a city somewhere in the middle of america which could be anywhere maybe but chicago anyway. Nearly. no it's not, it's not that know. big no, no it's not okay. chicago but i think it's that okay. part of the world somewhere. Okay. but anyway it was oh, a good cool. one i enjoyed rereading it all right, so my first one is um, The Scent of Romance by Danica Favorite. It was part of the Arcadia Valley uh, romance multi-author series that Valerie and I were part of as well. Right. Um, and she had um, a lavender farm. All of her books in the series ah, were set around a lavender yeah. farm. And uh, the first one, Carolyn is... Um, basically desperate to keep the fam the farm in the family her grandmother's running it um but her grandmother fell and um so there is an investor trying to get the land um and so he sends an, a lawyer out basically to you know sign here and re rake in your money put your grandma in the home and you can all live happily ever after um and carolyn's like no this is this Lavender Farm is my legacy. I have plans for how we're going to handle this. Um, and so, you know, Hayden, who's the hero, um, sort of is just taken aback because like there's this pile of money that he's trying to throw at them and Carolyn's having none of it, even though like her dad, who's the child of the grandma, would be like, yes, let's take the money and run. And Carolyn's like, it's not, it's not your decision. Grandma has said that it's my decision and I'm not buying. So um, I liked that. Uh, and it is spring. And, you know, so she's trying to, all of this is at sort of a crucial part in the, like, if they're going to set up the lavender farm to be a success in the coming year, she's got other stuff she needs to be worried about than this lawyer who's sort of dogging her heels. Um, Plus, she's got her grandma in the hospital and they're working on all this stuff. Um, plus, the grandma is just a hoot. Um, that was a great grandma. Grandma. <laughs> grandma's a hoot. Um, <laughs> so uh, she kind of steals the show in a lot of places. Grandma, Grandma's fun. Um, and I just, uh, you know, when I was thinking spring, I was like, what? And this was the first one that popped into my mind. Yeah. So it was a good one. I enjoyed it. All right, we still have, to, we got plenty of time. Let's do another one, Valerie. Okay, the second one that I picked was Love Meant to Be by Sally Bayless. And it starts in January, which I uh, will acknowledge is not springtime <laughs> pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, it starts with Zach's car losing control on icy roads and sliding into the snowman that Meredith just made. Uh, Meredith had inherited her grand grandparents' small farm with its greenhouses. See, we're getting to the springtime part. <laughs> and she's preparing for planting season while her sister is away at culinary school. And the two of them are planning to start a little farm to table restaurant mm -hmm. in the house next door, which belongs to her aunt and uncle, who decide to sell it to somebody else without telling her. Mm -hmm. um, and that somebody is da, 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 the hero, Zach, who just ran over her snowman. Um, and not only that, but he doesn't even want to farm it. He wants to put in win a wind farm. 
because he's Ooh. an investor. Oh so my. I mean, it's, it's not even like, it's not even no. going to grow sunflowers or lavender or, you know, let alone beans and no. peas, you know, Big, it's, tall, it's pretty bad. Ugly. Um, so the reason that I put this in my lineup for today with the spring theme is that there are quite a few <laughs> scenes set in the greenhouse as she's planting and, and preparing for the upcoming season as well as in the garden. So and the greenhouse is um, a very pivotal, pivotal, nope, pivotal. Pivotal. pivotal, let's go with pivotal, oh my goodness, <laughs> um, uh, setting for several of the scenes in the story. So yeah, that one is my pick number two for today. Excellent. You've talked about that one, I think, before the snowman. Yes. Like decapitates yeah. the snowman, I think. Yeah, and, yeah, and the, I, the, the snowman is great because he slides into it, and then the, he comes to a stop, and the head of the snowman is like sitting on the hood of his car, staring <laughs> at him. I'm like, nice, yeah. love it. Nice. <laughs> and it's such a metaphor for how he's about to railroad and destroy her life. Yeah. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Excellent. What's your second, Nero? My second one is um, Pinky Promise by Valerie Comer, which I have talked about before. We've all talked about before. Um, but this I've reread um, the Revenge Romance books recently, so I couldn't resist sharing this one again. With the two cute six-year-olds, their, their parents are single parents and they're twins, so they share the same birthday. And, but they're um, not twins. But they're, they're not just twins. Birthday twins. They're birthday yeah, they're birthday twins. twins. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, they basically, she's lived in town for a while and um, he moves to town and becomes her boss and she works in the gardens. So that's a spring tick yeah. as well, looks after the gardens in town. And um, he has a childcare issue and um, needs someone to look after his daughter during spring break. And so it's um, Kelly who ends up looking after um, not only her own daughter Elena but also Sophie and so Ian's a hero in this book and it's just such a fun story these girls are just adorable and if you like watch reading cute kid books then <laughs> this is one of my favorites and it's yeah. Valerie's favorite age she likes five and six-year-olds so she's excelling <laughs> in the cuteness there and then there's the pinky promise which is where Kelly does the pinky promise with um, Elena and says you are not to ask Ian or anybody else to marry me and become your daddy yep. yes so that's where yep. the title comes in but it ticks all my boxes in terms of spring it's just such a fun story I would agree that is a really fun one I almost chose I that one totally <laughs> enjoyed writing those two little girls they just yes. they stole the show ran mm -hmm. away with it yeah what I also really remember enjoying from that one is kind of silly but um the heroine Kelly uh, is reading another one of Valerie's books on her tablet and I'm just like that's brilliant <laughs> that's so smart she snuck another title in there just to she had to read people. something <laughs> yeah so smart like blew my mind at the time I was like that's you can't do that and then I'm like yeah actually she she just did yep. <laughs> but of course romance is the best of course she's going to be reading romance absolutely <laughs> <laughs> my uh next one is actually also by valerie comer um you might you might be surprised that valerie who <laughs> loves all things having to do with planting and gardens and such uh has a lot of books that qualify yes. with the spring theme um yeah lots of them so i chose uh since i was on an arcadia valley kick apparently i went ahead and stuck with that and i chose sewn in love um, by Valerie Comer. This is Joanna, who needs to use a house and greenhouses for a church. Oh, see, look at that. If you're on YouTube, you can see the picture. Yes. <laughs> but that's the wrong one. That's Sprouts of Love. That's Sprouts? Which one did you say? <laughs> Stone. Stone and Love. Oh, it's, Stone in the, and... it's in the collection. So it's in the collection. I have a cover for it there. Okay. Sorry. Oops. My bad. Um, and Grady, uh, is the grandson of the man who is giving the property to the church and um, kind of not on board with the whole project in the first place. Um, and it's just fun, you know, it's how they're sort of arguing over how these greenhouses can be used and to what effect. And um, 
just he's kind of grumpy and kind of anti everything doesn't matter what it is he's grumpy and anti it um and so Joanna That's has, how I remember Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna has her work drawn out for her and um I just I think it's fun they have they have good chemistry the two of them sometimes characters I don't think necessarily have fun chemistry I mean they still have chemistry but but not necessarily fun and Joanna and Grady did um I just remember liking them as a couple even before they were a couple because they they sparked off each other um and it has greenhouses so it qualifies (laughs) win-win and I enjoyed that one too it didn't make my list because my list would be too long (laughs) excellent fair fair that's a real problem when we're it trying is. to narrow down to two or three um, stories each, okay. for sure. Yep. Uh, we can do a third if you guys have a third. Valerie, do you have a third? Sure. I've got another orchard story. Oh. It uh, kind of amused me as I was going through one that I'm like, oh, this one actually has a fairly similar idea, but it's a completely different story. And it is Not Until Forever by Valerie M. Bodden. I may have mentioned a time or two. Um, (laughs) In the, um, it's probably a prologue, actually. Um, Spencer is called home during his final year of university, and because his father's had a heart attack, Mm -hmm. and he needs to go home and take over the family's apple orchard, cherry orchard, cherry. Um, So he but he wants to marry Sophie like more than anything. And so he proposes to her quickly right then. And she turns him down Mm -hmm. because this was not their plan. They are going to graduate in just a few months. And she has like all these things she's going to do and going back to their little town where they grew up in Hope Springs, Michigan is not one of them. And so the real story opens um, five years later when she is Here's another one of those little connections to the first one. When her grandmother is sick and dying (laughs) and she has to go home. And um, she's just, of course, hoping she doesn't run into Spencer. But, you know, Valerie M. Bodden is an author and it's a romance (laughs) book. And so she does run into Spencer. Does. And, um, and they run into each other in the hospital. He is there, his father's having a second heart attack and he's in a room close to Sophie's grandmother. And um, so they have to talk to each other, (laughs) poor people. Um, So the whole story really does hinge around that, that cherry orchard and some of their memories from when they were dating in high school and um, just the, the hope of, rekindling something that they had both given up on a long time ago so that was my third pick but Narelle um I have one more and I'm not going to talk too much about it because I've spoken about it before and that is um Spring Splash by Denise Weimer and that was the adorable story with the hero who has a sister with autism and he runs the swim team for special needs um people Yes, and so mm-hmm. she's the university college student who's um, got to do a, a, re- a research project for um, her studies and ends up helping in terms of doing marketing promotion with the special um, needs swim team. And so the goal of their training is to, um, I'm just trying to remember the name of it, the spring splash meet is coming up. So they need to do well in the spring splash meet because that's where they can qualify to um, be on the Georgia um, Special Olympics swim team. So it was just, a, it was a great story and it's set around spring and a, and a swim meet and swimming is a spring thing to do. So I thought I would add, add that works. one into the That's a good yes. one. I read that one after you mentioned it the first time. It is such a cute story. Yeah. It is so, so good. Um, really, if you haven't read it, that for sure, put that on your list because that, it You're was- You're going to put that in the show notes, right? So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, to remind me. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's really really fun. I enjoyed it. Um, it's gonna sound terrible more than I thought I was going to, but I really I don't know why I I don't know I there. 
it sounded interesting enough that I looked it up and then I was like, okay, let's see. I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, I think it's sports, right? And so we know that Beth does not do sports, but um, it was fantastic. Just such a fun book, such a fun book. Um, my last one uh, is, is one of mine. Um, I'm going to do A Handful of Hope um, by me. And um, it, it has some spring metaphorical uh, issues to it as well, because Jen does deal with depression um, and, and the seasonality definitely hinders hers. And as, as it does, it also is set, it ends in spring. And that's sort of what made me think of it is they go uh, in DC along the Tidal Basin area, um, the Washington DC was gifted a whole bunch of cherry trees by Japan. I don't know how long ago now, a long time ago. Um, and so, but every year there's a big cherry blossom festival and um, it's, it's so gorgeous. Um, just all the pale pink petals say that fast. Cherry blossoms. Uh, there, yeah. There's so many here in the valley where I live. So I can picture, I can picture our orchards with, yeah you know, tall buildings. Well, and they're not, what's even nicer is they're right around the monuments. So it's not tall buildings. Okay. It's like white marble domes. So, cause it's, okay. it's by like the Jefferson Memorial, which is domed and the Lincoln Memorial, which is squared, but, but they're white, you know, they're the white marble and then they have a reflecting pool, the tidal basin. Mm. So it's water, they're reflecting off the water and the monuments are reflecting off the water and it's all very beautiful. Mm. Um, and uh, that is that is at the end, and that is my favorite thing about living in this area at spring is the cherry blossoms. Maybe not so much all the people who come to this area to see the cherry blossoms, <laughs> but <laughs> if you can sneak down there uh, either right before peak or right after when the crowds have thinned out some, it's just magical. Nice. So, yeah, and that's I a great remember story that now. too. Yeah, that's. Uh... Yeah. And it's kind of the, that hope at the end, surrounded yeah. by cherry blossoms. <laughs> it works. It, it, it's definitely. Yeah. All right. Final spring books. Do we have any? Anybody have another? They're dying to mention. I'm good. No, okay. no probably half my books take place in spring. So I'm just not even going to start. Right. Yeah. Oh, we've I mean, got to spare five hours, don't we? <laughs> we'll do, sure. we, should do a, we can do a whole month of episodes sometimes on Valerie's books. <laughs> we'll just go series oh, yeah. by series. We'll put oh, her on the hot seat for months on end. No, we won't. No, that would take us through a couple months right there. It's it would. Eight, eight <laughs> series going on nine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. All right. If we missed your favorite spring book, please let us know in the comments because um, obviously some of us, me, had more trouble with this topic than others of us, um, but we're always on the lookout for another good read. So definitely drop us, drop us your favorite spring-ish books in the comments. And we're so grateful you joined us. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube that you have subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. And um, check out inspiromance.com slash story chats for information on the podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, everyone.